Hi everyone, I'm Jin Han Wang from University of California Riverside. It's my pleasure to talk about what we have done recently, which is about signal scheduling in blue box fuzzing. First, what's a great box fuzzing? Basically, it generates test cases via a feedback loop in many three stages. First, signal selection. Each generated test case is fed in to the program and the test and evaluate it according to our coverage metric. If the test case is assessed to be interesting, it will be selected as a new seed and added back to the seed pool. Second, seed scheduling. A seed is picked from the seed pool according to our scheduling criteria to generate next batch of test cases. Third, seed mutation. Within a limited time budget, new test cases are generated by mutating or splicing the scheduled seed. Notably, coverage metric plays an important role here as it determines what kinds of states will be generated and what kinds of program states will be discovered. In more detail, an important property of coverage metric is its ability of preserving intermediate states. Consider flipping a magic number check, which is shown on the left. If a father can only consider edge coverage, then the probability of generating the correct value, which is dead beef, with random mutations is very small. However, if the metric can understand the distance between the operands, then in solving this check will be much easier since the answer can be generated from a sequence of states. Note that the intermediate states within the sequence act as waypoints that will dramatically reduce the social space to discover the final bug tracking test case. To this end, we define the coverage matrix ability of preserving intermediate waypoints as sensitivity. A more sensitive coverage metric is easier to preserve these intermediate waypoints. Why the previous discussion seems to suggest a more sensitive coverage metric would allow fathers to detect more bugs. In practice, this is not always the case. So the more sensitive the bet, sometimes not. The reason is the seed explosion caused by the more sensitive catch metric. In more detail, a more sensitive metric will create a larger seed pool, introducing many more seeds that exceed the father's ability to schedule. In addition, as the fuzzing pumping time is fixed, Many fresh but useful seeds may never be fast, and some important seeds may not be fast enough time to find the critical waypoints. Overall, a more sensitive coverage metric boosts the capability of a father to explore deeper program states. Nevertheless, in order to effectively utilize its power and mitigate the side effects of the resulting excessive seeds. The coverage metric and the corresponding seed scheduler should be carefully designed. So the first change we need to address is that there are too many seeds to examine for the seed scheduler, while many of them might be similar to each other. Note that although a more sensitive metric can capture smaller variances among the test cases, it loses the awareness of the potential larger ones between states. For instance, a metric marrying edge coverage is unaware of whether two states exercise two different sets of blocks, or the same blocks but through different edges. To address this issue, our key observation is that given two coverage metrics, one is more sensitive than the other, we can use the more sensitive one to select states and the less sensitive one to cluster 
cells that have been selected. Moreover, we can use more than one level of clustering to provide more abstraction at the top level and more finality at the bottom level. To this end, the coverage metric should allow the coexistence of multiple coverage measurements. We name such a coverage metric a multi-level coverage metric. In more detail, with the multi-level coverage metric, the seed pool is organized into a hierarchical tree, where internal loads are coverage measurements and the leaf loads are seeds. Notably, internal load represents a cluster of seeds with the same coverage. Here we show an example of a three-level coverage metric. The top is a virtual root load used only by the scheduler. At the first level are function coverage loads. Each contains seeds with the same function coverage. At the second level are edge coverage loads. Each contain seeds with the same edge coverage. And at the third level are distance coverage loads. Each contains seeds with the same distance coverage. With this tree, seed scheduling is to seek a path from the root to a leaf load. Then the second challenge is how to prioritize loads during scheduling. In other words, how to strike a balance between seed exploration and exploitation. Seed exploration is to try out other fresh seeds, since those seeds that have really been fast may need to surprisingly new coverage. Seed exploitation is to keep fuzzing interesting loads since a few valuable seeds that have needed to significantly more new coverage encourage to focus on fuzzing them. To this end, we model the fuzzing process of multi armed blended problem and adopt the upper confidence band one algorithm to schedule seeds within levels to manage the balance between seed exploration and exploitation. In consequence, we introduce a reinforcement learning-based hierarchical seed scheduler. In more detail, for internal levels starting from the root node, we select the child node with the highest score, which is calculated following the multi-armed banded model. until reaching the last leaf level. Since all seeds have the same coverage at this level, we schedule them with round robin for simplicity. Furthermore, at the end of each fuzzing run, loads along the scheduled path will be rewarded based on how much progress the current seed has made in this run. For example, whether there are new coverage features exercised by the generated test cases. In this way, seeds performing well are expected to have increased scores for the competing in the following rounds. While seeds making little progress will be deprioritized. For the seed scoring, basically we focus on finding those that have generated test cases, exercising raw coverage futures recently as they have gained more rewards and are expected to perform better than others in the following rounds. We also periodically try those that have been really fast or contain many seeds, since this indicates they have a higher assay today and they may need to surprise in the future. In addition, we also prioritize loads that cover raw futures. For the seed rewarding, we have some specific optimizations. First, we have dual rewards than old ones while introducing a discount factor as weight when calculating the reward score. Second, we upper propagate rewards along the scheduled path from lower to upper levels so that scheduling at upper levels is able to consider the progress that has been made at uh, lower levels. 
to demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach, we implement it as an extension to FL and FL plus plus, lemma FL higher and FL plus plus higher. We evaluate them on two large benchmarks, the CDC benchmark and the Google Fast Bench. We compare with some state of the art fathers as FL, FL fast and FL plus plus. In addition, to show that increasing the sensitivity alone is not enough, we also implement FL flat and FL plus plus flat, which use the same much never coverage match, but without seed clustering and with the faster schedule from FL fast. Here are some key findings. First, FL higher crashes more CDC binaries and faster. Especially, it crashes the same number of binaries in 30 minutes, which FL fast crashes in two hours. Second, on CDC benchmarks, FL higher achieves more edge coverage and achieves the same edge coverage faster. Specifically, it may increases the coverage by at least 100 percentage for 20 binaries and achieves the same coverage in 15 minutes that the FL fast achieves in two hours for about half of the binaries. On fast bench, FL higher achieves higher edge coverage on 10 out of 20 projects. Third, the results on CGC benchmarks show that FL higher has a competitive throughput as FL and FL fast. Moreover, even built on the faster father FL plus plus, our approach still has a comparable throughput. Finally, experimental results on CGC and the fast bench benchmarks demonstrate that our hierarchical theta scheduler dramatically reduce the number of candidates to be examined during CEDAW scheduling. In conclusion, we propose multi-level coverage metrics that bring a lower approach to incorporate sensitive coverage metrics in grip or fuzzing. We design a hierarchical CEDAW scheduling algorithm to support the multi-level coverage metric based on the multi-armed banding model. We implement our approach as an extension to FL and FL plus plus and uh, open source the code. We evaluate our prototypes on Docker CDC and Google Fast Bench benchmarks. The results show that our approach not only can trigger more bugs and achieve higher code coverage, but also can achieve the same coverage faster than existing projects. So this is all about our work. Thank you. Any questions or comments are welcome.